everybody and welcome to another episode of BS for Build. Today's episode begins a series of episodes where we will not be taking anything seriously because we are about to race lemons. What is racing lemons? Well, racing lemons is making fun of yourself, taking a $500 car and trying to do a 24 hour endurance race that is actually, I think, only 18 hours. And why is it only 18 when you're supposed to do 24? Because of lemons. That's the answer. We just have fun. We're gonna build a race car for fun, as cheap as you possibly can, for fun, while being very safe. That is the only not fun part about it is cost a lot of money to be safe. And then we're gonna race it around against Team Chris Fix, and I believe against Team Rich Rebuilds. But Team Rich Rebuilds has a bad history of being Team Late. So will they bring a car, will they not? I don't know. Am I starting drama here? Did I start drama? Yes. Ah. It's my, you too. My, hey! We get a million extra views automatically. Sorry Team Rich Rebuilds. Uh, if you are there, I will buy you a soda pop. Anyways. Uh, let me show you around our build that we bought for this year's Race de Le Mans. This is a 2004 Mercedes-Benz CLK 320C, marking the C, marking coupe instead of convertible, I think. The C could stand for anything, actually, to be honest with you. <clears throat> we bought this at auction for the low, low price. How much should we say we bought it for? Yeah, that's a good, that's 2800 no, no. That's way more than we bought it for. <laughs> that's more than we bought it for, Oscar. Really? Still more than we bought it for. Kyle, you want to say how much we bought it for? $200. <laughs> Two, yeah, we are $300 below budget. Bring on the mods. <laughs> how much did we buy? <laughs> too, that, too high. <laughs> too high. Too low. All right. Uh, we bought this car for $1,800 at auction. Um, and it is a $500 car race, meaning we're gonna have to bring our price down by, um, well, that's a lot, $1,300. Oh, we gotta sell. We gotta sell a bunch of stuff off this car, $1,300, uh, to bring it down to be a, a, a price of $500, or we can take penalty laps. Penalty laps are a thing. If your car is worth more, I believe for every $100 you go over, you get 100,000 penalty laps. I'm not really sure. It doesn't really matter, because we're all racing for fun. We will be fair. We will not cheat. Kyle disagrees. <laughs> I will agree that our opponents probably already have, but that's part of lemons. See, it's not how you cheat, it's what you get away with cheating on. That's car racing. That is racing. That's all the racing is. Formula One, every year there's new technology that is invented. Whoever cheats it the, the sneakiest way gets to race that way for a year, wins all the titles, and then they go on. So that's car racing. Welcome to car racing. And we will show you how to uh, cheat the on the budget. I mean, we're racing Mercedes. Yeah. Pinnacle of car racing. <laughs> pinnacle of pinnacle of cheating in car racing. Mercedes Benz. All right, Oscar, hop in. We'll give him the look around. So this is a 320C um, CLK. So interior flooded. Everything on the interior seems to look pretty good. I think the flooding actually will. This has a little bit of wear and tear on it, but it's not too bad. A lot of that's just like that'll wash off from the auction. I honestly think that this car actually flooded from the roof down or from the windows down, which is really, really weird. But this is not a flood line car where the water hit a level, but we did buy it at auction as a flooded car. So that's what we're dealing with is a flooded car. Uh, do you have the keys? I do, they're right here. Jump on in, fire her up, please. All right. Oh, it's doing that not starting thing again. Try and just let it go, just let it go. Okay, so that's it? Yeah, it does that. Okay, hang on. Let me talk. Let me explain to the viewers what's going on here. And, you know, because we're trying to be really honest about what's going on. Okay, guys. So we're hoping this isn't going to be the downfall of the entire thing. But we bought this thing at auction. We put a battery in it. It fired right up. Oscar, then, then we drove it back to shop A. And then Oscar today drove it to shop B, being here where we are now. On that drive to shop B, he got gasoline, and that was kind of it. And both times, it had a really, really, really tough time starting from cold. Did what you guys just saw there. He told me about it, we thought maybe it's bad gasoline. It still could be bad gasoline, we're not 100% sure. This is our number one thing that we are worried about about this car. We've looked over everything else uh, rudimentarily. I haven't really looked into anything too deeply, but I mean, hey, it's not leaking oil, it's not leaking fluid, it doesn't have a blown head gasket. It seems like it's a car that works. And uh, this, this could be, I don't want this to be our downfall. And this is weird. Engine is cranking strong. Temperature sensor. 
we got to scan everything, make sure everything's reading it's right. It's not throwing a check engine light. Nope. But we're going to walk you guys through everything that we would do. And that way, if you're building a $500 race car at home, you can hopefully play along at home. Um, or if you're just trying to learn what maybe, like, you know, buying a car from auction at home, how bad it would be. Uh, go ahead and try and fire it up again. Okay. Got a little pop, two little pops. Nothing. Try again. There you go. One pop. So when I step on the pedal, it dies off. Okay. Why is it priming the fuel system then? It should already prime be it, primed. Prime it a few times. Because I'm also getting a fuel light. I guess that's part. That's normal. There we go. I was about to say one more try and we buy a new car. <laughs> That's good. Okay, that is very disturbing. So she sounds good when she runs. She drives perfect when she runs. She sounds really good, yeah. Not wanting to start. Car history is question mark slash flood damage. Well, I'll be honest, this is an early departure from what we planned on having shown about how to build a Lemons race car out. Uh, we have to figure out what's going on with this car. The biggest thing that I've learned from Lemons from my friend Chris Fix is that you want to have the most reliable car as possible. It's not about having a fast car, it's about having a reliable car. And a car that doesn't doesn't start, and Oscar, did, I don't know if you agree with me or not here, that is not a mechanical problem, that sounds like an electrical problem. Yeah, that's a yeah. sensor, a thing, it's a, a sensor. something that says, oh, I'm not happy, and then the second it's happy, it just fires on. Yeah. And that's the problem is, if a sensor's pissed off on a flood damaged car, we could be hunting for it for ever. Um, electrical problem in the Mercedes is a <laughs> bad problem. <laughs> that's, a bad, that's a nightmare. Yeah. That's a nightmare. So um, as you guys will hopefully see throughout the rest of the episode, building a Lemons car costs a ton of money. Going to Lemons costs a ton of money. Not to say that it's not worth it. It's a very fun experience, but we're talking about traveling to New Jersey with a car. If we can't make the car work reliably, there's absolutely no reason in going. So I would say we gotta try and figure this out before we invest the time and money in putting thousands of dollars of roll yeah. cage material in it, safety and equipment, everything like that. It'd be a lot cheaper to buy a different car while we still have time. Yeah, we can sell this right now as a running, driving car and still make money off of it. Starting sometimes and then always yeah, running yeah. and driving. And yeah, of course we'd <laughs> <laughs> We said running, driving. <laughs> running and driving, not starting. No, I mean, that's, no, starting. that's your own problem. Find a hill. <laughs> All right, anyways, we gotta, we're gonna scan for some codes, see if anything popped up on the ECU. This is a lemon. It is a lemon. This is a We've lemon. We've proved it. Yeah. <laughs> this is only worth $500 at this point. Yikes. All right, guys, in true Lemons fashion, we tried all of our engine scanners to make sure the sensors on the engines were working correctly and all of them are out of licensing and out of date, so none of them work, except our most rudimentary ones, which tell us the engine has no problems. So we're going to continue on saying our engine has no problems. The thing that we uh, that, that's making me feel comfortable about this is we're going to spray starter fluid in it if it doesn't want to start, and then it will start, and then it will start. Because if it starts when it's hot, it will starter fluid start when it's cold. That's just math for you. That's facts. Yeah, it's facts on the books. And this is lemons and that's what we do. So let's move into the next stage of what lemons does, which is trying to make some money to pay for your $1,800 car and bring it down to being a $500 car. We've got a little bit of work to do. Yeah, this, this fancy engine cover is the first thing to go. Yeah, I think we could yeah. sell that. Don't break it, we have to no, sell it. It popped right off. It pops right off. And that's our electronic turbocharger. If you don't notice, that's shaped like a fan. Instant five extra horsepower. <laughs> How to lemons for dummies. <laughs> First step, remove the interior.
<laughs> I don't even know where to start. All right, okay, in true Lemons fashion, we've disguised our engine as a Mercury. There's no way the BS inspectors will get past that. And uh, I heard Kyle drilling out an airbag over here, and <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, uh, that's gone. And I thought he meant the airbag was gone, but uh, <laughs> I think, I think it. <laughs> oh, well, we should take it out for weight reduction. Oh my gosh, let's make sure that makes it in the dumpster. Yay. Hey, all right, one solid piece. Okay, cool. No, um, no window over here, which should be nice. Nice ventilation. All right, next really key decision is uh, more of a driver-oriented decision. Do we have music in the ride or do we not? We have the problem of if you're listening to music and we're filming a video for YouTube, you obviously can't have music going in the car. No yeah, we're gonna go no music. We have comms in everybody's headsets, thanks to rugged radios, we do have comms. I think we leave the speakers just in case we wanna let the neighbors know what's up right. as we're driving around. We most likely won't be able to play any music, uh, but and you wouldn't want to in a race because uh, you want to hear if the engine blows up. <clears throat> Not like there's anything you can do about it when it does. Obviously, if you're following this to build a track day car, the idea, light as you possibly can be. Um, if you're following this to be a lemons car, as fun as you possibly can be. And the idea of even if you guys can't hear it, maybe, you know, just blasting. What's that? It's not Cannonball. What's that song? Cannon. Do you think Van Halen will make an exception for us? I don't think Van my dad, control over it. My dad sold weed to Van Halen's brother. <laughs> <laughs> the, all right. Anyways. Uh, so anyways, this is one of those. Sorry. We had to figure out what the song was because I thought it was called Cannonball. It turns out it's called Panama. So let me tell you the story behind that. If you want to be one of those teams that takes being lightweight and driving lemons as fast as you can, as seriously as you can, seriously, then you would remove the speakers. If you want to be the team that's blasting Panama, not not cannonball down the straight at 110 miles an hour you're gonna do what we're gonna do and you're gonna leave the speakers in and then unfortunately because I we don't still know the Van Halen family it's gonna be copyrighted and we you guys get someone to parody the song is cannonball yeah we're gonna get somebody I'm gonna hire somebody to parody cannonball Panama to cannonball and then we're gonna air it and you guys will be able to hear it with us anyways we should probably get back to work um, door panels are off Speakers are on, windows are broken. <laughs> Panama is doing great. Let's move into the back seats. It's so empty. Car has been gutted. All of the interior has been removed. I'm confident that we have $1,300 worth of stuff here. I still got to call Ty and we're going get to get an estimate on our pile here. But uh, the bottom carpets were not sa savable. They, this car was, was pretty flooded. There was a lot of water in here. But it's all emptied out now. Functionality wise, the car is still doing the not wanting to start thing. But it, other than that, it still works perfectly fine. Uh, it's time to start moving on to the roll cage. Now, there's many, many different designs of roll cage that are acceptable for lemons racing. There's about three different designs. They only very, very slightly. And we're going to do the one that includes a single piece uh, rear main bar and a single piece halo bar. That's the type that we always build here on the channel. And then you have the A pillar bars that come down there and there. And then it just gets into bracing in the back and then our um, seatbelt bar. This is something that we've done a lot on the channel here. We have a lot of experience of doing it. This will be the second time that uh, we've done one that's gonna have to pass a text inspection. But Kyle just pointed out that there is one big addition on this one, which is door bars. We gotta do door bars on this. So we can either do an X or we can do two parallel bars that protect us from uh, from door impacts. So that'll be a fun new addition to something that we, uh, that we haven't done before uh, on a build. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We're not gonna really walk through this in extreme detail since we're doing so much in one episode. Um, but you guys have seen us build roll cages in many, many different episodes. We start with the rear main and then we do the halo bar and then we do the A pillar bars, and then we start filling in everything from there. Before we get down to building this cage, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Metal Supermarket. So all of the steel that you see us using to build our roll cage 
we got from Metal Supermarkets. All the steel that you're gonna see us use later to build the body kit stuff, all from Metal Supermarkets. Everything that we build, the steel comes from Metal Supermarkets. It's like a convenience store for metal. You can get any metal at any size, cut and ready fast. And unlike some places, Metal Supermarkets has no minimum order quantity. So if you just need one piece, just head on down there and grab your one piece. The speed of service is really good. The customer service and the employees that they have is top notch. I can't say enough nice things about those people. They're super knowledgeable and they're super friendly and it makes for a really good experience. So if you're like us and you're out there working on your car and you need some metal, look for Metal Supermarkets. There's over 100 locations in North America or you can buy online. So the link is at the top of the description right down there. Go click it, check it out, find a Metal Supermarkets near you. They are your one-stop shop for metal products. And huge thanks to Metal Supermarkets for sponsoring this episode. Now, let's use a bunch of their products to make a roll cage. Here is our pallets of sellable stuff. We have got price quotes from the guys over at Mullins where this is all gonna be going. And we've got it all on the pallet. On the screen right now is the prices for the different things that we got. And yep, that brings our price down to 500 bucks for this car. We are within spec. Let's go ahead and wrap it up and get it ready to ship. All right, good to go. All right, guys, our cage is almost done. We're just about to put the finishing touches on there. We got about four or five more tubes left, and then I'm gonna show you all the way through that, but we need to get started on the kill switch. So the kill switch needs to interrupt all electrical uh, charging, discharging, and ECU power, so it makes sure it kills the car. Uh, Chris Fix, as we speak, is doing a great episode about this. He showed us how he did his, and we are mimicking that. Uh, first thing you need to do is interrupt the power from the battery and the alternator, because remember, the alternator can, uh, if, if working, even if your battery's disconnected, it can continue to charge, to give you enough power to spark for the engine, to keep your engine running. So alternator is this one, battery is this one, actually switch those, battery, alternator. That's uh, those two things interrupted going into a very big gauge that's like a zero gauge uh, wire that's running over here and we're running into the cabin where we're gonna run into our kill switch and then it runs back to go to the battery, battery, alternator, and also ECU. The ECU is right up here, so we will find the wires that power, run the power to the ECU and also run those to our switch, and then we'll be disconnecting everything. We're gonna go ahead and get this all installed. The cool thing, or one thing to remember about this is it needs to be able to be reached by the driver when he's strapped in. So our driver with full uh, harness on needs to be able to reach this thing. So I'm thinking like over here, and somebody from the outside needs to be able to reach it too. So I'm thinking somewhere over here should be our kill switch location. We'll get it all installed, show you around that and our finished cage. All 
I was hopping in. The kill switch is at a testable point. That's what we would call this. It's not finished, but it is installed. So we're gonna go ahead and add power to the car. Now the car has sat cold for a little over a week. So this will be another good test for the starting and how worried we need to be at the event if it's gonna start. So Kyle's gotta put the kill switch in and then it's gonna put power through the car. I'm gonna just, just take this. It's just messed up. Right here, yeah, I'm gonna take that off. First try, baby, here we go. Whoa, we might have problems coming race day. <laughs> I'm so glad we've installed thousands of dollars of safety equipment into something that doesn't turn off. All right, we have got starter fluid. The last time we technically tried MAF cleaner, which we have started cars on before, but this is actual starter fluid. Uh, if this doesn't work, boy, are we in trouble. <laughs> we just like bought a car and while it was slowly degrading into not working anymore, we just installed a bunch of safety stuff. Solid life choices. How to win lemons. Yeah. This is definitely a lemons car at this point. All right, go ahead and crank her up. Ready? Yep. All right. That was simple. That was okay. So map cleaner is a no. Starter fluid is a solid yes. Oh. We'll go ahead and kill it right now. Not not with the kill switch, with the key. Okay. Uh, take the key all the way out, and then let's start again from scratch real quick, because that with fired that. up real fast. Yeah, that was, that was nice. Quick fire up. I don't know if that was the, the starter fluid or not. I, it did seem... It, it was timed very well for yeah. starting with the starter fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and just fire it up now. We'll try again. Okay. All right, now we're going to test the kill switch. So, Kyle, what you're going to do is rev it up to 3,000 RPMs and then just yank that kill switch out of there. In park or...? In park is fine, yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I just turn it off. All right, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I just let off, let off the gas. The car should die. Let off the. How is the car still running? <laughs> what do we do here? <laughs> oh, oh, there's smoke. I see smoke. Oh, it's the that it's the that part the fuse. Works. Yeah, the fuse. That part works. I think that's supposed to heat up. Yeah, but the alternator was still spinning. That's the idea. The alternator spins, pumps stuff into there, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Kyle, did you wire it in backwards? No. Nope. Test fit the seat in here, uh, and we made some changes to the system. I now think that this is going to work much better, at least I hope. We, we identified a small issue and, and fixed it. So uh, here we go. Go ahead and so let's power the system. It's got power. All right, see if it should start up now that it's warm. Maybe. Grab the starter fluid, team starter fluid. It was just it was just about to start. It's gonna start without it. Watch. Really? Yeah, yeah, go. First time Oscar grabs that. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, to finish the cold start warm-up, go ahead and rev it up to 3000 and kill it. Alright. Yay. Car turned off. Somewhat slowly, but that'll be fine. <laughs> all right, so now all we gotta do is mark the off and on position on here, get it finished being like riveted into the dash and insulate all of our connectors on the back here. And we should be all good to go. Um, then we're moving on to installing the seat. Hi guys, the cage is finished. I just wanted to show you one last thing that we added in before we paint it up. This is our rear seat back support. It doesn't have the pin in it, so it's a little bit flexible. But anyways, when the seat's all the way back for Jared, the back of the seat goes there. When Oscar's driving, it's more like this, and that moves us up forward so the seat back can go there. It makes it so if you get rear-ended, your seat isn't flexing backwards a lot. Very cool little thing. Now we're gonna paint the cage up white. Just basically give it a quick coat of paint so it doesn't rust on us. Oscar also finished the installation of the seat brackets and the sliders and everything into the car and I wanted to show off our new Corbo seat. This thing is pretty awesome. So it's a very unique situation having something the size of, of Jared in a race car and Oscar and myself and Kyle. We needed a really really wide seat that could fit a monster. I meant to say giant. A giant. A friendly giant. Jared. We love you. 
Anyways, this is a fixed back seat for racing and you can see it's just got amazing uh, build quality. It looks fantastic and the padding and everything makes it super, super comfortable. And this is the FX1 wide version and it's pretty much the widest racing seat I've ever seen. So if you have trouble fitting in racing seats, check this out. But they also have more narrow versions around. Check out the FX1 uh, for racing applications. Super, super economical, super good quality seat. Very, very excited on this. So thanks to Corbo for uh, sending this out for us and there's a link in the description. Go browse their site. Check Check it out. We got the cage painted white. Now it won't rust on us. That's actually a really cool look. A lot of little spray paint goes a long way. Now the guys are gonna continue working on some safety stuff. We still have the um, fire suppression system is a really big one that has to go in the car. And after that, we're getting really close to being able to pass tech, which is obviously the first priority. We have a day and a half left to finish this build and get it onto a truck so it gets to New Jersey in time for us to be racing. But every good lemons car needs a theme. And our theme, the reason I bought a CLK Mercedes is I really wanted to kind of like emulate or build a fake CLK GTR. Take a look at this thing. It's absolutely freaking stunning and amazing. And I wish, you know, I could have one, but I'm sure they cost like $20 million. So we're gonna build a fake one and we're gonna do it in pure lemons fashion, having a lot of fun. So I'm gonna be in charge of the body work on this thing and we're in for a doozy. So uh, Kyle's gonna make a metal supermarkets run, get the metal that we need. I'm gonna go get some of the other stuff. We gotta head to the shop. We're gonna look for some old used broken car parts. And I'm over at the old shop and I'm basically just gonna look around everything that we got here that basically didn't get used for its intended purpose and see if I can repurpose it. I'm really trying to get things for like the front fenders, maybe front bumper. And I mean, if I can find some side skirt stuff, even better. Oh, and a spoiler. I'm gonna go scrounge some stuff up and I'll let you know what I find. All right guys, here's what I was able to find. Off of a Mustang, we've got some fenders. These are a little dinged up, a little bent up. And I think we'll be able to maybe use these to help make the wide body in the front. I've got an old knockoff RE Yamamiya fiberglass front bumper that was not used on the RX-7. We may be able to use that as the front bumper extension. If not, Mustang GT front end we could use as the front end extension. We've got side skirts also at the Mustang GT. We should be able to just rivet these on pretty quickly. A little bit more aggressive look, a little rear window lip. All the, all the fins, all the vents, all the everything just makes it more race car. And then a giant ass wing that came off of my Aston Martin. Oscar wanted a big wing on this thing and I will not disappoint. Is it all gonna fit in my FJ? I doubt it. <laughs> Kyle's got the Raptor for the steel run, so this will be difficult. Oh yeah, easy fit. All right, got the parts back to the shop. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start in on the front end. The front end has a very distinctive, like very weird snout that goes to it. And it really just needs to start extending at this point and coming out really drastically. I'm gonna leave the other bumper on there below it just in case if this stuff falls off or something, at least we'll still have a front end. There's no reason to take it off. So I'm gonna leave that there and build onto it with this. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna do that by uh, cutting this in half horizontally and then smushing it up there. Lots of rivets. Well, we learned a few things. One, our white spray paint isn't quite the color match that I thought it was. And two, I'm, I can make a Mercedes look like a platypus very well. 
Today's our last day to finish the body. I worked till like 1 a.m. last night on this and I was like, I'm gonna get a coat of paint on it, go to bed, wake up in the morning, see what I think. I hate it. <laughs> I cannot have the car like this. Yes, it's lemons. Yes, it's all a joke, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. So if you look at the CLK GTR next to our platypus here, really our, our sore spot is right here because it, it comes forward too much and doesn't go down enough. So if we would have been able to just do a straight diagonal from the grill, it would have looked a lot better. So I'm gonna try and figure out how I might be able to do that. I may cut the uh, OEM Mercedes bumper in half and bring it forward and, and out a little bit. And I think I'm gonna cut up uh, what's left of this uh, fiberglass bumper and just use that as essentially a splitter uh, wide body extension. Sometimes perfection just means cutting the bumper in half and flipping it upside down. Couldn't be more happy with how this looks. We're gonna slant it out a little bit more at the bottom, rivet the hell out of it so it can't come off, build supports for the bottom, and we done with the front bumper. Thank Odin. Front bumper is mostly done. I ran out of rivets, we're gonna run to the store, but that's basically done except for bottom sport. Just consider that done. Moving on, we got the fenders all trimmed up. These are gonna work as our over fender. It's gonna be an extension off of that current fender line and they're gonna come over. Now we need to start working on our side piece. Uh, the, the CLK GTR has a giant side piece. We're gonna go ahead and build that off of the door here and it's gonna come out to down here and then it's gonna be two pieces and it's gonna go into this door too. So it's gonna be like a giant, box type thing and then from there we can cut some cool vents into it and other stuff like that on the safety side of stuff the fire suppression system is installed so got the fire suppression system right there pull handle right there you yank on that there's eight different nozzles that that thing leads to four in the cabin and four under the hood that will suppress fire we've got our comm system mounted right there and probably very most importantly is our wheel and tire setup so these are the koenig countergrams in a 10 and a half inch wide by I want to say 18 and they're wrapped in Nitto NTO 5s and both these companies have been huge supporters of the channel and sent these out for us to have on our race car and we have uh, one set on the car right now and a backup set too so the NTO 5 is a really really good track tire has tons and tons of traction it's a race oriented tire so this is going to be really good if we have anything that gives us the upper edge uh, while racing it's going to be these so huge shout out to these companies I'll put links in the description very very good stuff very economical great price point for the quality that you get. Oh, and also the Corbo uh, five-point harnesses are installed as well. You can find those on Corbo's site and I already have a link in the description for that. Huge thanks to all of our, our sponsors, all of our partners that have helped us on this build. When we do a huge build like this really fast, a lot, a lot of parts go into it and uh, it takes a lot from everybody. So we thank them so much for making it all happen. All right, I think all the safety stuff is basically done. We will pass tech with this car. So now we just gotta make it look cool and not have anything risk falling off. So I'm literally using half inch thick solid round stock to weld into these doors to build this side panel. It's gonna be beefy.
Oscar got the spoiler on. That's a plus. Downside is my side skirt idea. Um, it's just not. It's not looking. It's not looking the way that we wanted. Uh, I'm gonna scrap it. I'm gonna cut everything off, and I'm just gonna work with uh, just the Mustang GT side skirt as like an addition to come out and to come down, and then we'll build off of it in each direction. It's a tricky balance when it's this late in the game. We only have like a handful of hours left to finish this build, and uh, picking cosmetic stuff one over the other, or whatever. So you got to really try and make the right decision. But I think it's important to not be afraid to give up on an ugly idea and just try and do the better one, especially if you can make the other one faster. All right, we got our first decal for the build printed up. So Chelsea is in charge of all the decaling and the livery that we're gonna do. So this is a kind of a test, just something really simple. And it's gonna go right there on the black part of the windshield. So we're gonna get that cleaned up. Oscar's got the main spoiler and the secondary spoiler. So we were gonna build the one that kind of swoops around spoiler from the CLK GTR, but then all the ones that have a wing actually do, do this thing. So we're gonna incorporate this with a little bit more, but we also want the truck to be able to open and close. So that's a work in progress. Side skirt's also a work in progress. Roof scoop, work in progress. Kyle is riveting the hell out of that roof scoop. We absolutely can't have that uh, come off. Basically, Chris Fix's car had a lot of problems with overheating, so we're, well, and also the CLK GTR has a roof scoop. So we're gonna scoop a bunch of air in here, shove it down in here at the driver, and then we're gonna let it release out here, and then I'm also gonna cut, I'm gonna cut a hole right here to let a bunch of air out here. So, a lot of stuff going on at once. I'm gonna work on getting the other side side skirted and the skirt's firmly attached on the up top. They're, they're good on the bottom, but they need, to, they need to be mounted right there. And then we can start working on the fenders. Guys, I think I'm cursed. Everything I think is gonna work out just doesn't work out, and uh, this is no different. So these Mustang fenders, these are aluminum. I thought they were gonna be steel, but they're aluminum. So I was trying to get uh, rivet everything on, everything like that, but basically we, we have a problem is, is the car's too wide. The rules state that no rubber from the tire can stick over, and this can't really sit on here like this. So basically this fender's not getting wide enough. We have, in the back, Oscar's, uh, trailer fender situation is looking really, really good. Um, so we're gonna, I got some more trailer fenders over there. I'm gonna cut them up, I'm gonna use them because they're gonna be steel and then I can actually weld them to the fender. Uh, so we're building more wide bodiness from scratch.
Ta-da! <laughs> this car is so silly looking. Oh my God. So we went for the CLK GTR looks, starting with that slanted front end and then trying to do this wide body that goes back. And then the CLK GTR, the, the, the top of the wheel to the top of the, like the end of the car is only like a matter of inches. And on this thing, it, it's feet. So it kind of, we, we kind of missed the mark, but what we did do is straight up build one of those cars from Need for Speed Underground. <laughs> this has hard Need for Speed Underground vibes and I'm not hating it. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna change up our hood livery that's, that's on its way. And uh, man, this thing, it's just special to look at. We've got a few more things to add on here and then a lot, a lot of decaling is gonna get it on here. The biggest thing is, is our only advantage that we're gonna have over any team is our wheel and tire combo. We have really, really great tires and really good wheels that are very, very wide. They're gonna give us a lot, a lot of traction on the track. The rules state that you have to have a solid body part coming over every piece of tire. So we had to build a really sturdy, really large wide body kit on here and we had fun with it and, and I don't hate it. It's hilarious. It's our Levin's car. It's our $500 race car. I don't know if I said already or not, but the wheels and the tires, they count as safety equipment. So you can just like throw the best version of what you can find on there. And I think that's the only spot we're gonna get our edge is gonna be in the cornering. So we're definitely not gonna have the most speed or the best braking, that's for sure. So we stayed up till 5 a.m. yesterday to finish this part. Now Chelsea's job is to do the rest of the vinyling on here. And we're gonna throw a few more little trim pieces on here to Put the little salt on the steak. Show you what it looks like when it's done.